Welcome to Occult 101. This is Frater BF. It seems appropriate to start off this whole shebang with what is known as the seven hermetic principles, because these are ideas which provide a foundation for and permeate into all the subsequent ideas associated with things like magic. You gotta crawl before you can run. When I say the phrase Western mystery tradition, this group of ideas is largely what it is referencing because it is essentially the root that nourishes all occult thinking and magical processes. Uh, the seven hermetic principles are as follows. The principle of mentalism. The universe is mind. All things exist primarily as a mental construct. Number two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. This is an expression of the fractalized nature of physical creation. Number three, the principle of vibration. Everything exists as a frequency, a rate of vibration. Number four, the principle of polarity. The expression of the physical world is a construct, one that is created by polarity. Two oppositional poles create the middle ground. Uh, number five, the principle of rhythm. Uh, there's a natural ebb and flow to the energies that create life in the cosmos. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. Everything creates an effect, and every effect becomes a cause. In the dimensions of time and space, all energetic information recycles and transforms itself. Number seven, the principle of gender. This is an expression of the aspects of masculinity and femininity that exist in all of creation and serve to create the multitude of experience in form. Before we get into the specifics of all that, we should probably define the term hermeticism. The term hermetic comes from the old Latin word hermeticus, which is derived from the Greek god Hermes. Hermes was the messenger of the gods, and so when we speak of hermeticism, we're speaking of a set of ideas that is direct knowledge from the gods. You can interpret that however you want, but largely this set of ideas is attributed to the character known as Hermes Trismegistus. He is a messenger of the gods comparable to both Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth, who, among other things, was a god closely associated with wisdom and magic. The name Hermes Trismegistus comes from ancient Greek and means Hermes the Thrice Great. That's a pretty bold move, but Hermes follows it up by penning a series of philosophical works called the Hermetica, which span topics including astrology, magic, alchemy, and medicine. The Western mystery tradition follows a trail back through the medieval alchemists to ancient Egyptian mystery schools. Alchemy itself is a system comprised of processes that are both internal and external. Inner alchemy is also a process of turning lead into gold, but in this sense, we're talking about gold as a transformed and purified state of consciousness. It exists in this fashion because of the law of correspondence. These processes have existed involved over many centuries and are most definitely not a set of arbitrary correlations. It's an airtight process, you could say, like a magical seal, and it's where the phrase hermetically sealed originates. The seven principles as they're written are sourced from a more recent work called The Kabbalion, which was published in 1908 and lists the authors as a group called the Three Initiates, but it's rooted in the works of Hermes Trismegistus. In 1945, 13 codices were found near the Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi, buried in a sealed jar. These writings contained a large array of Christian Gnostic treatises the most famous of these being the Gospel of Thomas, which is derided by the Christian hierarchy as heretical because it doesn't depict Jesus as a messianic entity, but rather it is a transcription of his own words as a living man. Tucked into all this were also several hermetic works. They told of hermetic mystery schools, and one depicted a conversation between Hermes Trismegistus and Asclepius. There's some interesting parallels drawn here. Asclepius was a demigod and was known as a healer. The rod of Asclepius is the symbol commonly associated with the medical field, depicting a singular snake wrapping around a central shaft. The staff of Hermes is what is known as the caduceus, 
and it depicts two serpents oscillating around a central shaft. In essence, both are depictions of the energy systems of the human body, in particular the evolutionary force known as Kundalini. The serpents of the Hermes staff are the twin channels of energy known in Hinduism as Ida and Pingala, the central shaft being that of Shushumna, which is the primary channel of energy in the body. It could be said that proper flow of energy in the body is actually what creates health, and that a blockage of these energies is what creates disease, as in, the ease of the flow of energy has been hampered. Dis-ease. The strength of the Western mystery tradition, that's a tongue twister, is the synthesis of the world's many systems into a coherent whole, and it reaches back through the ages to the beginnings of human thought, including those from the Far East and the oldest traditions still alive on the planet. All of these systems overlap and reiterate many of the same ideas clothed in the language and traditions of the areas from which they derive. Ultimately, this thread of unity in underlying themes persists due to the first hermetic principle, the principle of mentalism. Because all things exist first as mind, and the physical essence of those things evolves from that mental seeding. There are many secrets to be unveiled just in the language we utilize. All things evolve in the same way as our languages. They exist as an idea, then through a series of chemical reactions, sometimes a bunch of awkward meat-smacking sounds, a new thing is born. The entire foundation of what we perceive as reality can be understood by first absorbing this most fundamental and primary concept. It's simultaneously a simple and an extraordinarily complex idea and will for sure take more time than a few minutes to explore. So that's where uh, we'll pick up next time. Agape.